Hi everyone, this is Kane Fitzwater. You're watching my channel. Um, thank you for watching my um, D and D stuff so far this year. Um, I was not expecting it to be viewed at all, like beyond a hundred views, and here we are, at least two hundred, um, probably more views on each video. At least the first two of the um, D and D episodes. Um, for some reason, the algorithm for the third episode did not go through when I posted on Christmas. So if you missed out that third video, bam, it's right there. Hit that card and you get to see that third episode. And if you already saw the third episode, but you need to catch up on the previous one, bam, you go to this one. So you have these two cards to catch up before this episode. So we're going to continue with um, this fun adventure that my mom had done um, to summarize. We were on a sacred mission, secret mission in a way, um, to help find this Pukums, which is this teddy bear that the doctor wanted us to find. He had a sonic screwdriver from the current um, incarnation of the doctor gave it to us and we're using it as like a sonar tracker in a way we don't know how else to use it um i think that's why the doctor allowed us to use it so we went through this whole ancient abandoned dwarven temple and we went underneath the dwarven temple into this great um upper underdark um, section we encountered some frog people uh we Graded? Great to side. <laughs> Very typical of, you know, your um, Dungeon and Dragons adventure. You know, a little bit of regicide here and there. We honestly didn't mean to. We thought we um, they had the Pokems and we thought our lives were in danger. You know, that's the story. I'm going to stick to it. But no, uh, we realized we went the wrong way. So we went past through the shaman's door, down um, a natural bridge, hide among the mushrooms. A chul came out, um, scared off the rest of the frog people, um, discovered us hiding there, and now we have to fight this um, chul. <laughs> uh, so we finally took care of the chul. Um, that's where we last left off in our adventure and lo and behold there was some loot to be had and in this loot uh, we had some amazing things um, our barbarian was able to get a axe of dwarvish lords uh, which is an awesome battle axe um, our bard uh, was able to get wing boots and a pearl power and a stone no good luck uh, which um, helps gives him a plus one in all of the saving throws um, and Pearl of Power, if you don't know, is a um, spell slot extender. It creates a extra spell slot um, when you need it the most in emergencies. And it allows you to, you know, cast a spell when you're out. Um, Ishtana, our Yanti cleric, was able to get a Mesa Disruption, which she loves so much. Um, Orga Gauntlets, uh, which... I thought she was going to keep, um, it, it was given to our barbarian, he um, put on the gauntlets, he's like, nah, it's not really doing it for me, because he was already buffed up as it is, and the max it could go is a strength of 20, and our barbarian's like, pretty up there. Um, so we gave the ogre gauntlets to our cleric, and with that mace of disruption, it does really nice damage. She also got some uh, ring of regen which I think it's either Regeneration or Restoration, one of those two. She also had a Staff of Striking and a Wind Fan, which I thought, you know, no, I think that was Gronk, our Goblin um, Rogue. He got a um, Staff of Striking and a Wind Fan. He wanted to have something comical and fun to use. He also had a Wave Trident, um, and I think he used that to... Actually, no, he has yet to use that yet. 
So um, I think he just got the loot um, just because it's cool, uh, but I don't know if he has the uses for it yet. So far, I haven't seen him use them yet. Um, we did a lot beyond this session. Um, let's see. So because the bard had the wing boots, um, our grung got feather fall and spider climbing. Um, so he could climb up to any wall and ceiling, and for some reason, he, if he fell down, it's going to break his fall. And he also wanted to walk, so he could walk in all surfaces thus far. Um, he could walk on walls, ceilings, and on water, which is cool. Um, and he also got an oil of sharpness, which will help, you know, his weapons be a little bit, you know, nastier. Now, there were three other items that were probably more powerful than um, all the others. Actually, no, just two more powerful than the others. And Lena got some plot items. Because, um, you know, um, in the anime series, oh, she was a main character. She handled plot items. And I know she's a little bit, you know, power greedy. So she's going to die for these things. So she got... A staff of power, which she switched out, and she had been using since then, um, a orb of dragon kind, which is a wonderful orb that you could scry and do any sort of divinations on, and also track dragons. It's a wonderful curse item, uh, where um, history to be told. Um, there were a bunch of mages trying to take um, down the dragons. Because they're causing a whole lot of problems in the land. So it was a lot of um, dragons fighting against mages. And the mages won out. And they won because they had these org mode dragon kinds. They would use this as bait to track a dragon. And um, these mages were able to strike them down. Now this orb became sentient. And um, if anyone uses it, they have to make a... Um, I think it was a wisdom saving throw to make sure they're not charmed by the orb to help um, the dragons. All of a sudden, these orbs are, are able to become more sympathetic towards the dragons that are being slaughtered and want to help out, you know, make them rise up, up and take over the world. Because why not, you know? So that was cool. That was one of the plot items. And there was another that the group did not identify that Lena could not figure out. She rolled all of her arcana. She rolled her history. She was able to figure out what the orb of Dragonkind is, but not this wand. This wand had a skeleton head on this kind of a vertebrae wand um, extender. And... Um, we couldn't figure out what it was. It created this very powerful, um, evil energy. And as far as Lena is concerned, she's going to keep a hold on it. Just, you know, we could give it off to the guild for, you know, safety. You know, she's going to suss it out, you know, just in case. All that yet other stuff. And Ishana looks at Lena, looks at the wand, and knew something bad was going to happen. So she stuffed the wand in her back pocket. And we um, don't deal with that wand until um, we're done with this adventure and going into the next one. So that will be a little bit later for y'all. Alrighty, so... Um, Continuing on, after we looted, we rested, we recovered our spells and our health, we went to the back of the cave and found a secret door. And at the back of the secret door um, was some sort of portal. We went through this portal and um, after some dimension, you know, um, shimmering effect um, going on, we pop into this almost it's kind of beautiful in a way it's a leveled sandy plain 
Um, the ground is sandy. Uh, it's very nice. Seems pretty clean. Um, very still. Um, the there's no walls per se, but we had this feeling that even they came up in this weird cathedral kind of point. Even though we know that we can't really see the sky, we know the sky is coming up in this weird cathedral art. So our mind knows, but our eyes are not seeing it. And it's very weird that we're able to um, get that type of information. And at the horizon border, there was this mist that blurred out the sand meeting the sky. So they all seemed to melt together in a way. And um, that was cool. And also kind of terrifying because we realized we went into another plane of existence. We went into a dimension that's not our own. We, freaking out, ask Ashana, um, is this the right place? Are we really supposed to go here? Because we took the wrong turn before and we had issues. She um, used the wand again, um, the screwdriver, and realized, no, we're supposed to go this way. We took one step, and all of a sudden, a bunch of tentacles came out of the sand, and we had to roll for initiative. And I'm thinking in my head, all the awful, you know, anime tentacle monsters that are popping into my head. Um, and I thought, oh, I, I mean, this is made by my mom. So I'm like, mom, why? And she's like, no, 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 no. It's not what you think. It's okay. So, she was right. It wasn't like what I think. Um, it was actually worse. Um, every single time we get hit by these tentacles, we have to overcome some sort of constitution saving throw. Otherwise, we get diseased or we get some sort of weird enfeeblement. Um, we get some sort of um, weird sickening disease stuff um, coming from it. So... It was awful. Um, this creature was going to try to make us um, sick and ill while fighting us. So it's just like those Komodo dragons. Um, they will poison and make the animals sick um, before they feast upon them. Um, eventually, we all wailed on it. Uh, we're able to get some tentacles down. Um, as we're combating it, but we know that we have to get to the main body of the host. Um, so by the time we reached to Lars turn, um, he did a self levitate where he was able to fly up to see what, um, where everything is and try to shoot from the sky. And that popping idea in my head, well, why don't I levitate the entire creature out of the sand? There's a chance that I could do that for an unwilling character or creature and just pop them out there. And with a staff of power, I was able to do it at a higher, higher spell level than I ever had done before. So with the staff, I was able to lift this creature out of the sand and out pop an abolith which is one of those Cthulhu-like subterranean monsters that are part of the Forgotten Realms and will, you know, cause a lot of nasty crap on the characters before it, you know, devours them. It's one of those Karen Crawler creatures from the Underdark. And um, there was a small nature note with, with these epilogues that they can also live in a sandy environment. And she thought, this would be great, and smack this under creature in this plane of existence. <laughs> so um, this Cthulhu offspring was totally unsmirched from this whole place. This looked like a um, beached whale floating up in the air going, what is going on? And um, we all just wailed on it. Uh, Yashtana, with her Mesa disruption and the Ogre of Gauntlets, was able to um, incapacitate this creature. We all wailed on it. Um, 
and uh, eventually defeated this creature. And that was all within, ooh, I want to say two, three rounds. Um, it was a quick fight, but it was done out of in high anxiety because we didn't like the fact that we're getting all these, you know, status ailments at all, you know. We know that it will end up bad pretty soon. Mind you, we are level six going into seven during this time. So we are still thinking of the lower levels that, oh, if we have the status, um, status element, you know, it's going to really, really kill us if we don't take care of it. But at the end of the fight, our Ishtana, um, Yanti cleric, was able to do a uh, lesser restoration and healing word, and all of us were back to normal. So no diseases for us. Yay! So we followed the wand through the mist, and we came upon these really cool metal double doors. We weren't able to decipher um, what they are. Uh, we saw um, this really cool sandstone temple with these really awesome pillars in the front. It's like um, Peta, um, or Petra, sorry. It's like Petra in the... Um, Indiana Jones, um, later to the Lost Ark, um, it, that whole, you know, it came out of the mist and all of a sudden it's this beautiful sandstone temple of ancient time and this wonderful architecture. And we're, we're just in awe of it. And we thought, oh, this is so cool. And this is where the loot is. Let's go. Um, as we approach the... <laughs> metal doors uh we saw a sphinx and the sphinx like oh well hello there no people coming along this is nice i was getting a little bit bored now in this family it's not unusual for us to encounter sphinx i think in this um campaign run this is our second time I'm trying to remember how many Sphinx encounters we had. But I think overall this might have been our third or fourth in total of the whole family games that we have done. And this may be the second in this campaign. But in the prior Sphinx encounter, it was with a different set of characters. For these characters, this is entirely new. And we all are used to riddle games. Um, it's kind of a bit of our fun thing we love to do. So we were puzzled with this rid riddle. Um, so let me read it off to you in my handy dandy note. Hmm. I never was, am always to be. No one ever saw me, nor ever will. And yet... I am the confidence of all who live and breathe. What am I? So we thought, okay, it must be hope. Because sometimes in hopeless situations, it gives you the confidence to keep on living, keep on fighting. So we thought it was hope. And it turns out that was not the right answer. Um, but, you know, that was a good, you know, uh, that was a good answer, but it was not the correct answer. So we thought, okay, if it's not hope, what else? Um, so we thought it could either be dreams or faith, and we weren't sure whether, which one we're going to choose. We all had, um, a single chance between all five of us. So we all took turns to speak what the group's uh, answers are. So Grong, I think it was Grong. No, it was Lars who asked about uh, dreams. 
And they said, well, that would be a feel for seeing what this is. And Grung said faith, and it, it was very similar to hope. So it was a yes or no kind of thing. And eventually, it was after hearing that um, dreams was um, the fuel for what it is, I think it was either my dad or my brother who was able to figure this out. It was tomorrow. And um, she said, you know, that's a good alternative um answer so i'm gonna take it it was future so technically tomorrow is the future so that was cool so the reason why it was not dreams or faith or hope is because of the word i never was am always to be um you always going to have hope even though it never was hope you know so that doesn't make sense um whereas the future um the future isn't here yet it's always later it's always beyond the present the present is now the future is just one second ahead of it and um, yet it always to be. So this was very, very clever. And I really love this, um, this thing that um, she made. Um, so thank you, mom. That was cool.